thank you everyone for joining the what is it october meeting of the oak park neighborhood association um we have these meetings every month every first thursday of the month um at 6 p.m on zoom we're actually i'm really interested in having a conversation about shifting back to in-person meetings uh, maybe that's something we can talk about before we're, we're over today um for those of you who who might not be who might be newer to the neighborhood we used to have these meetings in person at the Oak Park Community Center, and we'd provide dinner, um, and it was a really, really fun event for, for many of us. So interested in, in uh, the possibility of going back and for opinions on that. And of course, we, we stopped doing that because of COVID. Um, but I think the first thing we're going to do is, is go uh, around the room and do some introductions, see where folks are coming from. Um, if you represent an organization, you can share that. If you're, if you're a neighbor, you can share um you know where you're coming to us from we're in the neighborhood so uh, i'll begin and then i'll just call on folks my name is adrian wren i'm president of the oak park neighborhood association and i'm a renter on fourth avenue uh, near 39th street in north oak park i will go to rosie next thanks adrian hi everyone my name is rosie ramos i am the secretary for the oak park neighborhood association and i live on santa cruz and i've been here for over five years Rosie, Michael Blair. Hey everybody, Michael Blair, and I'm a board member here with OPNA, and I live in the south part of Oak Park. Thanks, Michael. Let's go to Robin next. Hi everybody, I'm Robin, and I am the senior district representative for Assembly Member Kevin McCarty. And congratulations. I think I, I saw the announcement. You're you're one of the new NELP DMI Emerging Leaders uh, cohort. Is that correct? So congrats. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Katie Maple, looks like you're walking. Yeah, I've been doing a lot of that these days. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Katie Maple. I'm a neighbor on 2nd Avenue, former board member and candidate for city council in District 5. Adrian, you gonna pick the next person? You're on mute. Oh, hey, Kevin, why don't you go? Sorry, I think I muted myself. What's that? Hi, Kevin Sapini with my wife and I own Conscious Creamery at 34th and Bright. Thanks, Kevin. Uh, let's go to Katie DeMaio. Hi, um, my name's Katie DeMaio. I own aim consulting uh we're here in i live personally in esac but my company is in midtown but we're working with the city on a couple of new road improvement projects coming broadway complete streets downtown mobility plan um and just kind of starting to join some neighborhood groups and associations let you guys know when the construction's coming when when we can get your input on things and so just again my name's katie with aim consulting glad to be here thanks Thank you. And we'll have, you know, we'll have plenty of time uh, for announcements and other things. We have a bunch of fun stuff on our on the menu for today. So just got stuff to announce, though we'll have time for that. Let's go to Cassandra Jennings next. Oh, hi. I guess I'm already unmuted. Hi, I'm Cassandra Jennings, president and CEO of St. Hope. Glad to be here. Thank you. Michael Swanson. Oh, sorry, I was actually changing my name in the time period. Um, this is uh, me and my partner. I'm actually Emma. I'll write it in the thing. And this is Sonia. Uh, we just moved to the neighborhood like a month ago. So happy to be here. Oh, my God. Welcome. Where, where in the neighborhood are you? We're on 33rd Street, uh, 3427. Yeah, between 9th and 10th. Yeah. Right on. That is so exciting. Well, drop your email if you wouldn't mind. Drop your email in the chat so folks can get a hold of you. I think you'll have a you might have some neighbors on the call and certainly we'll want to get a hold of you to keep you in the loop and to, on things. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Let's go to Caesar next. Hi, uh, Caesar Dennis from UC Davis Health, Office of Health Equity, Diversity and Inclusion. Caesar. And is it Krishnia? Uh, it's Krishna Parker. Hi. Um, I, I don't belong to any of these organizations, but I live on Truckee Way and um, 
Adrian and I met working on the 34th Street Garden. Yes, we did. Thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. Vicki. Hello, uh, my name is Vicki Smith. I'm with the Sacramento Housing and Redevelopment Agency. And hi, Cassandra. Um, <laughs> Uh, here tonight with um, my coworker Emily Brown to tell you guys a little bit about a new grant program we have. Fun. And I think I saw DK. Want to unmute yourself and uh, share your affiliation or where you're coming to us from? Oh, that's me. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Daniel King. I'm here with um, Bohana, Bohana Cannabis Group, and uh, we're here to present our project to you guys. In yeah. Thanks for being here. Yeah, we're super interested in hearing more about the Ohana Cannabis Project on Stockton Boulevard. Um, and that'll that'll happen when we're done with intros. Um, is it Miriam? Yes. Hello, everyone. My name is Miriam Azimi, and I'm also here representing Ohana Cannabis Company. And I'm looking forward to getting to uh, introduce who we are and uh, looking forward to being a part of this conversation tonight. Thank you. Then I see someone named iPhone Darlene. Is, is your name Darlene by any chance? Yes. Um, hi, my name is I'm Darlene Smart, and I'm also with the Ohana Cannabis Group. And um, yeah, I'm looking forward to speaking with you guys and yeah, and to introduce ourselves. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, Emily Brown. Hi, I'm Emily Brown, and I'm with Sacramento Housing and Redevelopment Agency with the key. Cool. And I think I saw Isabel Dela Cruz turn her video on briefly. Isabel. <laughs> Thanks, Adrian. I'm cooking dinner. Um, Isabel Dela Cruz. I'm a resident here uh, near the Rancho, Rancho San Miguel grocery store and excited <laughs> to be here with you all. Also work with Adrian at Valley Vision. Thanks, Isabel. Um, let's see, Rob, Rob Fong. Hey, Adrian. Hi, everyone. My name is Rob Fong. I'm uh, also here tonight uh, on behalf of the Ohana Cannabis Company. So thanks for having us. Thank you. And, and is it true some, some folks might know you if they've been in Sacramento for, for a few years? Is that correct? I think only Cassandra knows me <laughs> and Chris Baker. And maybe people who like have an unnatural, you know, interest in city politics. Hey, I know you. <laughs> hey, Katie. Yeah, that's true. Katie and I are old friends. Well, maybe, the old to, part. maybe for, for us newbies, you might want to just share, you know, your past affiliation, just, just out of curiosity. You know? Sure. So I'm a native Sacramentan. Uh, and uh, let's see, uh, I... First met Cassandra when her husband Rick and I served together on the school district board. I did that for six years from 98 to 2004. And then from 2004 through 2012, <clears throat> I, uh, I was a city council member uh, representing a district, what was district four, which is now district seven. But uh, so that's it in a nutshell. Thank you, I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. And we'll, we'll hear from you shortly about the, the, yes. cannabis, the cannabis business. Um, Sue, Ida. Hello, everyone. Uh, Sue Hita from the Sierra Curtis Neighborhood Association. Uh, interested in what you guys are up to and uh, particular interest on uh, transportation avenue. It just doesn't sound good. And by the way, uh, Rab Fong, I knew of you when in your theater days. So that's going back even further, I think. Oh, my God, Sue, you are so right. And I am so uh, mortified that you mentioned that. But thank you. Bell, bell, bell bottom pants. I remember that. You I remember, remember yes, yeah, Sam. I am. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Wow. <clears throat> well, I'm sure there's some images floating around on Google Images. So well, <laughs> hopefully that was before the internet. <laughs> oh boy. Well, let's go to Chris Baker next. Chris. Yes, sir, can you hear me? I was having trouble with this new laptop here yeah, anyway here chris baker south sacramento advocate for better business and education thank you chris um let's go to hugo 
Hi, um, I don't, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, um, I'm Hugo Ramirez. I moved here about two years ago. I actually live on First Avenue and 32nd. Uh, so I'm joining you guys for the first time tonight. Thanks, Hugo. Appreciate that and welcome. Um, Nasser Azimi. This is uh, Nasser Azimi. I am uh, the CEO of Terranomic Software. We are the property owner subject of the Ohana Cannabis discussion tonight. Happy to be here. I'm a former Oak Park resident, used to live on Del Norte Boulevard, and uh, very intrigued by uh, Rob's uh, past history I just found out about. Um, I always call him a celebrity, now it's proven. That's Thank hilarious. you so much. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Um, Sumiko. Hi, I'm Sumiko Honk. Sorry, I'm still in the car driving home. Um, I work at UC Davis as the community engagement manager for Aggie Square. I'm glad to be here. Thank you. And you guys have been doing a lot of construction, it looks like. Yeah, a lot of work. They're going vertical now. Oh, well, thanks for joining us. Um, yeah. It's good. Kimberly So. Hi, everybody, it's Kim. Uh, I live in Oak Park, former city council candidate. Good to see everybody out here. Thanks, Kim. And then last but not least, Seaver joined us just in time for intros. Seaver, you wanna share uh, what, what part of the neighborhood you're coming with to us from? Yeah, I'm near 14th Ave in Stockton. I saw the email, I clicked join, here I am. Hello. Thank you, thank you, <laughs> making it easy for you. Um, and it looks like we have another person joining uh, who was on earlier, but uh, Amelia, I know you just you just joined, but it was perfect transition from the last person. Uh, would you like to introduce yourself? <laughs> sure, thank you. Um, I'm Amelia Sultana. I live in South Oak Park on 14th Avenue, and I own Queer Shop, which is in the 3800 block of Stockton Boulevard. And I have bell bottoms. <laughs> OMG, OMG, perfect. Good plug. <laughs> yeah, if you haven't been to Queer Shop, definitely check it out. And you guys do events on Fridays, right? Yeah, we have a night market five to nine every Friday. Unless the weather is bad and we wouldn't want to be out there, then we turn it into mutual aid. Thank you. Thank you. All right, well, uh, we have a few folks with us who are interested in presenting on topics, um, namely uh, the SHRA and the uh, Ohana Cannabis Group. And then I know several orgs here have upcoming events and other things they'd like to promote. Um, I, I'm looking at our SHRA partners. Do you, about how much time do you think you will need um, for your presentation, roughly? Five minutes. Five minutes, okay. Why don't you guys get the get to go first um, so we can hear about hear about the program uh, and then uh, we can transition over to the cannabis discussion. Okay. Sounds great. Also, let me away? ask real quick, is someone going to need screen sharing privilege? Yes, please. All right. Michael decides who gets to scare, share their screens. <laughs> I'm generous. Okay. <laughs> there you go. You should have it now. Okay. Well, thank you guys so much for your time and, and in the interest of time, I will endeavor to um, get through this quickly. Um, I'm screen sharing a flyer about our, our new program. And earlier this year, and I want to introduce myself. My name is Vicki Smith. I'm a management analyst with SHRA. And with me tonight is um, Emily Brown, who's actually the, the program analyst who runs this program. So, but we just decided I would talk today. Um, at any rate, we applied for competitive funding from HUD for um, the lead hazard reduction program and we were awarded it. And we started this program earlier this year. And really the goal of this program, as you can kind of see as you're reviewing the flyer, is to target homes that may have the hidden health hazard of lead in the home so that we can get out there and do health inspections and certify that the home is lead free. And then if the home um, 
does not pass the inspection. We have some funds available to possibly help with repairs, and I'll talk about that in a moment. But um, as I'm sure you all are aware, you know, lead paint and the ingestion of, med of lead paint by a small child can really cause severe health impact. And um, we know that then a lot of the homes in Oak Park are older. This program targets older homes built prior to 1978. So um, just a little bit more about the program. As I said, the homes must be older than 1978. Um, we can do both rental occupied multifamily units or owner occupied units. If it was a renter that applied, they would need to have the permission of their landlord for the inspection or the owner of the property. But I mean, we're definitely interested in doing those. Um, as this is a program, one of HUD's requirements is that we're trying to help households that have small children. So for owner occupied homes, um, they need to have a child in the home that's under six or they need to be regularly visited by a child in the home that's under six. Uh, if rental occupied, we can do either a vacant unit or an occupied unit. Again, the uh, an occupied unit would need to be occupied by a low income family. And you can see our, our income table on the very bottom of this flyer, which I'm happy to share. So if the home does test positive for lead, um, we would do several things. We would want the child that lives in the home, if there is one to be have get them tested to make sure that you know there's nothing wrong with that child and then the home can be eligible for up to ten thousand dollars in grant funds i'm sorry my dog is barking in the background ten thousand dollars in grant funds um, typically the repairs would be th things like repainting like removing that lead paint and putting new paint in on either the interior or the exterior they might do some remediation of issues in the soil if there was lead in the soil, or a typical one in an older home is the the you know the casement around a window or a you know a window they, you know a sash might a kid might have chewed on it or whatever and so they can take that out and replace it. Um, we also can do temporary relocation as needed um, if it's a bigger job. Um, I would, for whatever reason, this program has been kind of slow to pick up steam. So we're really trying to get out more now and um, get out in the community and meet with folks and get this get this out there because it's just really so helpful to go out and have somebody, you know, reassure you that your home is safe for for your young child. And and then just the benefit of the grant funds on top of it are um, are just a tremendous plus. So. That is my super, super quick program. Um, Emily's phone number, our email address for the um, program are on this file. The website is on this file or this flyer. Um, and that is it. I'd be happy to answer any questions that anyone may have. Thank, thank you, Vicki. And I know, um, hope the folks can raise their hands if they have questions or put them in the chat. I, I have a question just about like, you know, if if I'm living, if I'm a renter living in kind of a, you know, a home that needs some work and maybe things aren't up to code, um, would I be maybe like, if the person, the inspector comes and sees stuff that's not related to this program, but that needs to be addressed or that might not be legal, I mean, what 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 would happen? I guess. <laughs> well, we did we did talk about that situation happening, and and I guess I guess number one, and maybe Emily chime in if you have a different opinion, but I would assume they would still go ahead and do the lead inspection, and you know at least give you that assurance. Um, but we really we really don't have funds to do holistic improvements. Um, but, I, but having said that, I think if they see something in, in a home that they think is really dangerous, it's gonna be hard for them to kind of overlook that. Um, I mean, if you're, if you get what I mean, there, 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 there's only, there, I, I assume that maybe like something minor they could overlook, but if there's something that they think is really a health hazard, they're, they're definitely gonna point it out. But that's not the intention of this program is to go in and you know, be the code enforcement police. The intention is to go in and and um, find this, you know, 
determine if the house the home has lead and and to get rid of it to the extent that we can. Got it. Thank you. Other questions for Vicki or SHRA about the program? Well, we'll get the word out, Vicki, about, about this. It, it does seem really important and a really good opportunity considering how many older homes we have in, in this particular neighborhood. So um, and just thanks to, just for- to give another, Just to give another quick pitch, we have another program that will be opening up. Um, is there a way I can get both of these flyers to you, Adrian? Yeah, I'll put my email in the chat. We have another, um, another program that is opening up. Um, Emily, when is the HRP? program opening up? It uh, runs December through February and then June okay. through August. Okay. So that program, Emily also manages that program and that program is um, strictly for health and safety repair items in a home. Again, the person has to be low income, um, but they will do things like new HVAC systems, roof repair, plumbing, electrical, I think they can also still do um, uh, ADA accessibility items. That we run that program for forever. Um, it's very popular. We run out of money really quick, um, and we're trying to market this one and that one at the same time, so we can hopefully hit, you know, um, the needs in both of those areas. Great. They're definitely yeah. complementary. Yeah, for sure. All right, well, I, I will send this to you then, Adrian, and then you can get it out to the other folks. Yeah. So, okay. Any last call for questions for Vicki before we move on? All right. Well, really appreciate you making the time. Yeah. And we'll get the word out. All right. Thank you all so much for your time. All right. Ohana Cannabis Crew. I don't know who is... Good to go first. All right, um, but we would certainly appreciate you starting from from the top. Uh, I think some of us are familiar with the project. This some this might be the first we're hearing about it. Um, would love to learn more. Okay. Well, um, again, hi everyone. My name's Rob Fong. Um, Want to make good use of your time. What I'm going to do is sort of introduce the high level of the project and, and the team, and then uh, uh, have uh, Nasser talk about uh, the landlord sort of developer side, and then we're going to introduce kind of the uh, the, the, the tenant who's coming in to, to, to be there. So, and, and we brought them as well. So, um, so the building in question is at uh, 47, is it 47, 49, 14th street? It's, it's that abandoned building on 14th, right before Stockton Boulevard on the left-hand side as you're heading towards Stockton Boulevard. I think way back when it used to be an auto upholstery shop um, for, for, yeah, for folks who are, who've been in the neighborhood a long time. And so it's been empty a long time. And uh, basically, um, we own the building and we are seeking a conditional use permit uh, to uh, get permission to have a storefront canvas retail facility at that location. The zoning supports that. Um, we've been working with the Planning and Design Commission for some time. Um, so tonight's meeting is really timely, Adrian, because we're actually set to go before the Planning and Design Commission for the CUP hearing next week, right? So um, the agenda item is supposed to hit tomorrow. Um, we've been given uh, approval uh, by the staff, um, but we're certainly um, going to be going to the hearing. Uh, we tried to meet with uh, all other folks in the neighborhood, um, including yourselves. Um, I would say that... Um, you know, Ohana Cannabis, and I'll let Nasser talk about this, and Terranomic, and we are um, very experienced uh, cannabis operators, um, uh, starting here in Sacramento, but now throughout the state of California. And we are um, preparing the space um, for a, a group of young, young uh, of entrepreneurs. Um, Daniel Kang, uh, you'll, you'll meet him. He was one of the 10 Social Equity Core uh, recipients who won the right to uh, have a, a, a retail license for cannabis. Uh, that was almost two years ago. Uh, they, they've been given three years to activate those licenses. So Daniel's uh, well on his way. And so that really is uh, kind of at a high level what's going on. Uh, and uh, what I'd like to do now is turn over uh, our presentation to Nasser Azimi. Uh, Nasser is someone that I met some time ago now. Um, he 
was at that time new to the cannabis business. Uh, he was uh, in the uh, tech industry as a software uh, engineer and designer and uh, has worked for a couple of governors uh, in public sector, but I'll let him talk a bit about himself and then talk about the vision for that space. Yes, sir. Thank you, Rob, appreciate it. Uh, first of all, Adrian and, and, and the group, thank you so much for uh, giving us the opportunity to share our vision for that particular location. Uh, we are what I always say the new face of cannabis in the context of what it's turning out to be as far as the therapeutic aspects of it. And you'll hear from uh, Mariam and Darlene who are actively involved in health and nutrition and uh, together with uh, Daniel Kang, we are basically looking to uh, revolutionize the way that cannabis is viewed. We are absolutely not what is a traditional model called a head shop. Uh, we predominantly focus on uh, cannabis therapeutics in terms of pain, anxiety, and stress management type scenarios. Just as a way of background, I'm a tech professional, as uh, Rob mentioned. I worked for a couple of governors in Sacramento ran the entire technology operation for state of California for almost a decade, uh, managed uh, budgets of in excess of $10 billion a year. As a matter of that, I uh, managed to launch a couple of technology operations of my own, built a consulting firm from nothing to about 300 folks and sold them, uh, sold the company that is, and uh, developed a series of software solutions uh, in the internet era and also sold them off. And that's really how I, sort of uh, um, established myself in the, as an entrepreneur across the state. A few years back, uh, my son came to me and said, hey dad, he's an he's a ag major, has this uh, amazing love for plant uh, life and as does Mariam and, and Darlene, as you, hear, you will hear about that. And he decided that he wanted to basically explore his, uh, his love and passion in the cannabis industry. So together we started looking at uh, legalization efforts and became excited about the fact that cannabis is now ha having deep uh, solutions in the context of therapeutic uh, aspects of it. So we got very excited and got into it. Now we have a statewide footprint up and down uh, California in uh, Northern California in particular, Sacramento is our home base. We also have a strong footprint in Bay Area as well as Southern California. Very blessed to have uh, stumbled upon uh, Daniel Kang. He's an amazing individual finance background and you'll hear about that. And uh, uh, incredible vision in the context of how we want to transform that particular location into uh, a so sort of a mainstream cannabis operation. Ohana Cannabis that Marion will talk about is really viewed as sort of the, the Apple store of cannabis. We are uh, uh, very consumer friendly and uh, very open in the context of promoting the, the right side of cannabis as far as uh, replacing the traditional opioids and uh, synthetic medicine with uh, more of plant-based and uh, health-based solutions. Very excited to be here and uh, given the opportunity to collaborate with one of the core members in Sacramento. We're very committed to promoting social equity. In fact, up and down the state, we partner up with social equity individuals to make sure that they have all the right access, not just to a limited amount of space as Oakland decided to do. We actually capitalized those individuals in the context of supporting them with uh, location, with finances, with Rob Fong in terms of legal and, legal, uh, and, and uh, a political background. And of course, myself, I bring significant amount of finance and uh, technology history to really revolutionize the way that cannabis is viewed in particular in the context of uh, high-tech security implementations to really uh, create an amazing uh, experience for the residents in any particular community. We are also very high on creating jobs and exceptional successes. We incubate individuals up and down the state to become entrepreneurs of their own in this particular amazing industry. And we're very proud of that, that establishment. At this point, I'm gonna turn it over to, uh, to Mariam and, and Daniel to explain a little bit about their vision for that particular location. And very excited to respond to any questions that you may have. All right, I'll take it from here. 
Hello, everyone. Uh, again, my name is Mariam Azimi. It's an absolute pleasure to be here with you all this evening. And just a little bit about myself. I actually have deep history in the Oak Park community, myself as well. I was born and raised in Sacramento, but specifically, I grew up driving down 14th Street every Sunday to go to church in Oak Park. I would attend Shiloh Baptist Church. Um, my grandma used to live on Del Norte. And so uh, in many uh, aspects, Oak Park is really like home to me. Um, also a little bit more about myself and my background. I was a really high level athlete coming up. I was a division one soccer player. I played at UC Berkeley. I was an accounting major. I'm a mom of three young boys. I've got an eight year old, four year old and a two year old. And um, in addition to that, I was raised by two entrepreneurial parents. Uh, my mother instilled in me the power of plant medicine and natural healing. And my father was a, a big time entrepreneur who instilled in me the tenacity and the mindset that uh, is necessary to run successful businesses. And so not only do I have that uh, mindset instilled in me to be able to run a, a successful business, I also am incredibly passionate about the therapeutic medicinal aspects of cannabis and plant uh, medicine in general. Very passionate about teaching people how to heal and thrive naturally. And so um, for the past four years, I have been involved managing the cannabis operations for Ohana up and down the state of California, uh, between Sacramento, uh, Bay Area, Southern California. So I'm extensively knowledge when it comes to knowing how to run a compliant, accountable, structured, successful cannabis operation. And as Nasser mentioned, we are very different than traditional dispensaries. We're not the type of dispensary that is, uh, you know, looking to just get people high or looking to just sell weed. We actually are very passionate about the uh, educational aspects of cannabis, and we take that greatly to heart. Uh, and you don't have to just take our word for it. I really encourage all of you to go, you know, go onto Google, look up Ohana Cannabis Company and scroll through our reviews. We've now uh, achieved in just four years over 2000 uh, reviews and we're averaging about 4.9 stars. And it's a true reflection of the way that we are impacting our community. And so um, we've got an Apple store uh, model, open showroom floor designed for the customers to really browse and take their time. And, um, and you know, again, just take a look at the reviews. The reviews really tell you everything that, that you need to know. Um, and so we're really looking forward to coming into the Oak Park community and becoming a positive force in that community um, and lifting up and elevating that community to another level. I'm more than confident that we will be able uh, to do so. And I'm, again, honored to be here with you all this evening. And thank you again for your time. Daniel, I'm going to go ahead and pass it off to you. All right. There you go. Thank you everyone for your time today. Um, as mentioned, uh, my name is Daniel Kang. I am the core member uh, applicant of the group. And uh, of course, thank you for this opportunity to meet all the folks from the neighborhood, which we consider a very important part of our process. Um, a little bit about myself. I grew up in South Sac and actually have pretty fond memories of uh, attending Oak Park's uh, Christian Brothers in my freshman year many, many years ago. Uh, so it's an honor and a privilege to be able to bring this exciting project to you today. Um, so my professional background is actually in back office com compliance, uh, where I help where, where I help many Fortune 500 companies stay compliant in their operations abroad, uh, ranging from tax to HR and payroll and everything that encompasses back office. Um, and then once cannabis legalization came to California in 2017, I thought, hey, this is the perfect opportunity for me to utilize my skills back in my hometown of Sacramento, uh, because it is an industry that requires, you know, has a lot of rules and regulations. Um, that need to be ad adhered by. Um, so I've been working towards that goal ever since then. Um, and prior to that, I worked in finance, uh, in the finance sector, helping manage risk positions across uh, trading desks um, in the Asian markets. Um, so yeah, um, I'm very excited to bring our fantastic, you know, modern cannabis store vision to Oak Park. And I uh, really look forward to being active in the community once we get involved. Darlene, are you there? Oh, sorry. Yeah, Darlene, me.
I think, I think you might be on mute, Darlene. We're not iPhone Darlene is also part okay. of the I got it. Uh, can Great. you hear me now? Yep. Hi, um, my name is Darlene Smart, and I'm also a native Sacramentan. I was born and raised in Oak Park, living off of Del Norte. And I went to Fruit Ridge Elementary School. I went to Peter Lassen Junior High School, and those two are now no longer. Um, it's Fruit Ridge Community Center. I went to Sacramento High School went on to Sac City, and then I went on to Sac State. And then um, I was employed with um, the state of California and the Employment Development Department of Tax Branch. And so I work with employers and unemployment insurance. So I have that knowledge that I can bring to the table as well. And I have a passion for health. And alongside of working with the state of California, um, I became a nutritionist with iridology reading and health consultant. And um, totally understand like with cannabis and nutrition and a different form of medicine, I am totally excited to bring that knowledge to that location, um, begin to help people to develop healthier bodies, stronger minds, and just a, just a vibrancy. And so it's um, gonna be a tremendous and amazing opportunity for us to be there and to share our knowledge and wisdom with the community. Um, I, love, um, I love Oak Park. And um, it's growing, it has its ups and downs, but this will be a definitely a positive thing in that community where we can you know, hire folks and just bring just, just an excellence to the location. Thank you very much. And any questions, please ask. Thank you. Okay, Adrian, that's, uh, that's it. And uh, obviously, um, if anyone has questions, um, we're here to address them. Wonderful. Well, yeah, please, uh, if folks do have questions, raise your hand as Chris is doing or, un or, or uh, uh, drop them in the chat. Don't just unmute yourself and holler. Um, we'll do this in an organized fashion. I, I know I have, I have questions too. Um, so we'll go Chris, then Michael. Okay, on, on this cannabis, how many feet are you away from uh, the schools down there. So I can address that. Uh, we are um, well beyond the buffer zones that um, uh, are anywhere. I, I believe there are 600 uh, feet from schools in uh, Sacramento. Uh, Is it we 600 are or 1,000 feet? About, it's 600, Chris. So okay. uh, yes, 600, yeah. We, uh, we fall beyond that actually, uh, Chris. We are uh, roughly around uh, seven or 800 feet away from uh, neighborhood school. Did you, was any outreach done around that area? So we've, uh, uh, Rob can address that in more detail. We met with mm -hmm. a few of the neighboring businesses to make sure that we understand any apprehension they have. Uh, I personally met with a number of the residents in the area and uh, not had any major concerns. Uh, parking did come up uh, on a few occasions and we have a solid history in that regard. Uh, we run operations in the Bay Area and parking in the Bay Area is like, like gold. And we manage that aspect of the situation very nicely in the context of uh, traffic flow. We hire uh, uh, highly accomplished security officers to look after the, the traffic management aspects of our locations and, uh, and of course bring uh, that the de facto security scenario that communities expect of us. So uh, we, we did do some outreach. We also went and met with a couple of the other community groups and uh, uh, have had uh, zero opposition or pushback in the context of our business model on what we're planning to establish in that particular location. So yeah, one of my questions, with... how many feet are you from Fortune Schools? I can uh, get the specifics and uh, and share that with Adrian, but we are uh, well, well beyond the, the, the buffer requirements. One of the first things that the planners do is to uh, assess the, the buffer, dis the distance buffer in the context of our our location, and uh, by the mere fact of their approval, uh, we we are well beyond that. But I can get the, the specifics from all the, the neighborhood schools and communicate that to Adrian to pass it on. To okay, thank you, sir. I might be able to do that uh, 
before this call is over. Thank you. Let's go to Michael. Thank you. And uh, a few questions, but I'm going to start off with why did you pick this particular area and location? Why, why this specific location? So uh, I, I can let Darlene speak to that. Uh, you know, one, one thing she didn't mention is the incredible passion we all have for community development. Uh, Darlene's mom used to have a hair salon right directly across from that particular location. And uh, we felt that bringing uh, an operation that can sort of revamp that part of uh, Stockton Boulevard, because it, it has been sort of neglected uh, for lack of a better term. And uh, we basically want to put some money in the community and hopefully jumpstart the local businesses in uh, revamping the look of that particular stretch of Stockton Boulevard. Uh, that's one of the predominant reasons, and you know we are very committed to giving back to the community that we uh, practically are grew up in. And uh, I used to go to Sac State and lived in Oak Park, and uh, you know would like to see some improvements in that particular area. But that's really the predominant reason: just giving back to the community, creating some jobs. We are definitely going to hire locally from the immediate community because we believe that that is the best way to. Uh, uh, demonstrate our commitment to the community as a whole by bringing jobs and prosperity hopefully into the community. I have a slight challenge with this and specifically in that area it's very sensitive very sensitive area and specifically within one square mile you you may not know this but you have low-income housing vagrancy issues at Sam's Market you have a mental health facility, about 56 beds, prostitution. Uh, if you go to the sex offenders list and just kind of look on the map, all within that area. Illegal dumping, uh, if you go to the high crime map, you'll see that as well. So with what you presented, it, it sounds positive, I understand. And I'm an entrepreneur myself, so I get it. Um, probably very low entry point to get in there and it's very convenient but for this area there's a lot of concerns and I don't see that cannabis would help elevate the area I see that it would bring uh, questions detriment possibly I've talked to a lot of residents and I'd be interested to know what community groups you spoke with because the ones that I speak with and I've been living here um, probably about five blocks from that location for about the last 20 years. So I've talked to a lot of folks and they all seem to be negative on the cannabis. And then I'll leave off to say that directly across the street, I don't know if it's still going because it's been some years since I checked on it, but there was a, I think a manufacturing location directly across the street from there. So it starts to now make the area very congested with a lot of things that people see as undesirable in general. And you know some of those things like the mental health facility, we need mental health, um, so I'm not downing it whatsoever. But when you start to add all those things up in a really concentrated area, and as I said, within one square mile, it makes it real difficult. And it makes um, you know home appreciations, things like that. Um, it just makes it a, a, a kind of a very difficult environment. And we're consistently, you know, as, as um, residents here, having to defend the area for for reasons like that. So. Just want to get your views on that. So let, let me um, take the first crack at that, Nasser. So I hear you. Um, we don't see ourselves as a blight business. So that's the first thing, and maybe others do. Um, the second thing is, is the city of Sacramento, um, and I'm sure Katie knows this, uh, did a pretty extensive study around cannabis, the cannabis industry, and the effects uh, it was having on the uh, sort of surrounding neighborhoods. And um, it, I thought the, the report was very clear. They said that um, there were no negative impacts, didn't, didn't have a negative impact on property values, on crime, on traffic or anything of that nature. And in fact, one of the things that has recently happened is that um, the city of Sacramento um, sort of decided no longer to sort of ask businesses to sort of contribute a 1% good neighbor fee, because uh, I'm just laughing, but I, I think a lot of it was because there was actually no study that showed there was any negative impact, right, on, on the neighborhoods. And I think one of the things that is surprising is that because we're going to have so much 
like professional security around our business, it actually makes the neighborhood safer and cleaner, at least in, in the area where we will be. So um, I, I think, I mean, I hear you, Michael, and I get that, but I think that the facts sort of would demonstrate that the opposite is true. So if, if I can uh, add to that as well, um, definitely uh, understand your point, Michael, in the context of uh, what traditional cannabis operators may have engaged in. And quite honestly, uh, as Rob mentioned, the uh, uh, studies show that property values actually escalated in the context of the added security and uh, capitalization that cannabis operations bring. And of course, please don't forget that every one of us predominantly focused on the level of awareness that we're gonna bring into the community. And as we know, uh, street cannabis has been uh, prevalent by underground operators. And predominant, one of the predominant reasons that we focus on education is that, is to bring that higher level of knowledge about cannabis and proper utilization and responsible uses into the community so that they are aware of the progress that cannabis has made in particular in the context of the therapeutic solutions that are offered. We believe our business model is not just spoken in a positive sense, but it is a positive implementation of what cannabis needs to become as a mainstream business, but also as a solid replacement for opioids and uh, synthetic medicine that is pushed in neighborhoods. Uh, you know, folks need to know. They need to know the truth about what cannabis really is and what it, it, it no longer is. Of course, in the context of uh, traditional models, there's always that stigmatism. We are looking to overcome that. We're looking to show, as I said, the new face of cannabis with mainstream business and solutions that actually are, are resolving uh, different health scenarios. If you watch CNN, you see kids that are basically uh, solving issues in the state of Colorado, that having two, 300 seizures a day Non-psychoactive cannabis is essentially reducing that to one or two a day. That's a revolution in my mind in the context of what solutions cannabis is bringing. Elders in Bay Area, we heavily focus on the therapeutics of cannabis and elders from various communities are turning to us to better educate themselves. And Mariam is doing an exceptional job to fulfill that demand in the context of what cannabis really is to bring remedial solutions to the table. So we hear you, we are definitely in tune with that aspect of community stigmatism, but we offer a different solution, my man. We are on a different platform. Our message is different. Our partnerships are different. We're all about business, security, job creation, and new, new, the new face of cannabis that we believe will revolutionize everything about traditional cannabis is known to be. I'll just leap off by saying I agree with the health benefits of cannabis. I just don't agree if this is the right location, but I want to give some time to other folks because I'm sure there are some other comments. Thank you. Let's go to Cassandra, then Katie, then Hugo. Um, thank you. Um, I think um, the reason I reacted, Rob, is that I was going to ask about the one percent requirement. So you're or so you're saying that no longer exists. I was asking whether there was one percent that they would put into the community. No, but uh, so what I think what happened, Cassandra, and I don't know the facts on this, I think uh, the city was being sued by a couple of folks and decided to settle that litigation because you know how the city works. They're, without a nexus study, they couldn't really sort of justify that thing. So, um, but I can also tell you, and, and I appreciate you sort of asking the question this way. So we, ha we have a community foundation called the Ohana Community Foundation, and we will be putting money into that foundation for um, to, to spend in the communities where we are, if that makes sense. Yes, okay, because I, I think um, if you do get approved that it's gonna be real important that you um, invest in the community in addition to what you're bringing for your business. I had two other questions. Um, one is how many employees do you intend to em employ at 
any given time. And then the second part of that, so you can answer it together, is describe to me briefly, I guess, what is your non-traditional model of operation, including what the hours would be? Nasser, did, or Miriam, do you guys want to respond to that? I apologize. Can, can, uh, can you repeat that? I, uh, I was finding the distance to the nearest school, and it turns out to be 1,700 feet away. <laughs> yeah, it's far. Um, uh, oh, yeah. My, my question was, how many employees at any given time or your peak and then could you sort of just describe your non-traditional model um, and the, the time, the operations, like what's the timing? Are you open? How long and what happens when you go in that makes you different? Definitely. So initially we're planning to open from uh, uh, 11 to 7, 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. And uh, the, in terms of the, the peak staff, uh, initially we expect to hire roughly about 10 to 12 uh, individuals locally to uh, not only run the sales operations, but also run the inventory management, the back office. And uh, uh, in the context of a typical experience, when an individual walks in, in a traditional dispensary, you go stand in line, and then you go up to the counter and then the individual behind the counter will basically like show you a few products. Mind you that others are still waiting in line uh, to be serviced. And of course the individual that's at the counter uh, has no other options but to rush you through the sales transaction to get you out of there. I generally call that the DMV model because you know you go stand in line, then you go up to the counter and when you're at the counter, they rush you through the experience leaving absolutely no time for the educational and awareness aspects that we are absolutely focused on. In contrast, in our model, you walk in, we have open space with glass displays so that everybody can see the truth in the packages that are displayed in those glass displays. Along with that, we call our uh, staff on the sales floor cannabis consultants. We don't call them butt tenders. Those are degrading terms for individuals. We call them cannabis consultants on the basis of the fact that we put them through extensive knowledge transfer and training upfront. So they understand the realities of cannabis way beyond just the smokables. We teach them about edibles. We teach them about uh, uh, tinctures. We teach them about everything that cannabis is nowadays way beyond what the traditional understandings are. So in that context, customer walks in, open space. We have no lines. You basically walk in, you browse, and the first thing uh, that uh, a cannabis consultant asks the customer is what brings you in? So we first focus on developing an understanding of what the interest is in the context of bringing that customer in. And then we go through a dialogue with them about how they use it, how they plan to use it, and we quickly focus them on the notion of microdosing. You know, a lot of people really don't understand cannabis use as for as long as it's been around. So what we do is we teach them about uh, responsible use of cannabis to properly dose it so that it pairs up with their biologics for an amazing experience, whether they are trying to relieve pain, anxiety, stress, or be able to get a good night's sleep. And many times you'll find that the products that we, uh, roughly over 60, 70% of our products don't even get you high. They are basically... Uh, CBN and non-psychoactive products predominantly focused on the remedial aspects of what uh, cannabis is doing nowadays for folks that are in a particular predicament. So that's a typical experience. And then when the conversation uh, evolves, then the, the customer is happy with uh, whatever that the dialogue turns out to be in the context of products that are selected. Then uh, the customer continues to browse and learn about other products if they wish to do so. As the cannabis consultant closes the transaction and goes to the fulfillment table. So the customer is never really going to a table killing time. They just browse around as the cannabis consultants go to pick up products and close the transaction and, and walk them out the door. Thank you for that. Uh, that, 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 that I talked about. Yeah. 
Cassandra, did that answer your question? Thank you. Was... Yes, it did, Adrian. Thanks. All right. I know. I, I we we just have we have limited time, so trying to get to all of our questions, and we'll do Katie Maple and then Hugo uh, next. Hi. Yeah. Thank you so much. Um, so I just want to say that yeah, uh, he was right about the Nexus study. So what they did was they took a look at and did a study over multiple years of you know whether or not cannabis businesses were a negative impact on the community, and so. That was actually done for legal reasons because there was a you know pending lawsuit. So um, that's a really interesting read and happy to send it to anybody. Um, so my I have two questions. Um, one question is, uh, are your um, are your employees unionized? So are these union jobs? And then um, two, oh, I just like lost it. Oh, is this a is this one of the original 30 licenses that the city had uh, originally put out? Or is this one of the 10 equity licenses? Thank you. So uh, I can take the union job. So we are very committed. In fact, uh, Rob represents uh, a union. So he'll be on us to definitely unionize in the context of uh, the, the individuals that we hire. Um, as far as the, this is not one of the 30, this is uh, one of the 10 core uh, uh, permits that were issued. Daniel King is the blessed uh, core winner who teamed up with us on this. Thank you. Um, so I, and I see Amelia, your hand. We're going to go to Hugo briefly and then and then to Amelia. So Hugo, and then, and then we're going to have to stop questions. So appreciate that. And you're on mute, Hugo. Hi, thank you. Um, I just have a couple of questions and one concern. So my first question is, um, I would be curious to know how many cannabis um, dispensaries are in the area because I know there's one not far from me and um, I'm a respiratory therapist I'm a medical professional and I on, am on board with the cannabis situation with healthcare. care um, so I'm with you on that but um, my concern I know you said I've been to cannabis shops before and I, I understand how you're talking about how they kind of walk you through a couple at a time my concern, especially in that area, is um, if you have too many people in the, the store shopping at the same time, my first thought is robbery. You know, it's a high crime area, and I'm just wondering how vulnerable your shop would be. Um, and I lost my train of thought on the other one. But um, if you could answer to the, the amount of dispensaries within the area. Definitely. So uh, the, the nearest dispensary that we are aware of is uh, uh, on Stockton Boulevard near Highway 50. There's a Starbucks. I believe there's a dispensary called Perfect Union. That would be the nearest. Uh, the rest of them all are all spread out. Uh, so that one is roughly about a couple miles away. Uh, there, there's absolutely no concentration uh, of uh, dispensaries in particular in that particular location. Uh, so we believe that from that standpoint, uh, our location is, uh, is a preferred one. And uh, of course, in the context of your apprehension about security, we, uh, we work with two local established security companies and uh, they will be assisting us with security, securing the premises inside and out in the context of uh, basically, uh, uh, eyeballing individuals that come in and assessing their intentions proactively and engaging in any, uh, you know, diffusing that needs to happen. In addition to that, uh, myself being a technology professional, uh, we implement uh, security systems with license plate recognition, facial recognition, uh, ev everything that is basically available in the industry will be implemented. Recently, the city of Sacramento implemented a policy that requires 24 second, 24 seven uh, remote security monitoring. Uh, in fact, th these are high tech cameras that uh, we install at all of our facilities now, and they have two way communication. So a 24 seven <laughs> monitor uh, basically uh, uh, assessing the quality of traffic coming through and giving us proactive notices about any suspicious activities 
before the individuals even approach our premises. So we believe that our model is highly secure, very proactive, and quite honestly, in terms of the, the crowd that, uh, that will be coming, uh, cannabis is, is not like it used to be back in 2018 when it first went recreational where there were lines out the door and folks crowding. It is more or less becoming mainstream business. You know, you, you, uh, on average, we get roughly about uh, 10 to 15, 20 customers per hour. And the pace is uh, very manageable in the way that we handle those customers. And we don't expect that to be any different at, at that particular location. And we, the, the way that we do it, and of course, even if it does, our security officers will pace the situation and ensure that the approach is manageable by the available staff inside the store. Uh, I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, 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 my name is Michael Benjamin. I got here a little bit late. It's my mom's birthday, y'all. I apologize. Um, my question is, what, what, which uh, facility is this? I'm sorry, I got here late. Is it the, is it the, uh, which upholstery is it? Because there's upholstery places on either side of 14th. Which one is it? It's right on the corner of uh, 14th Avenue and Stockton Boulevard across from Church's Chicken. Okay. So my, my, my concern is, is uh, growing up on that neighbor, uh, in that, on that exact street, um, what, are there any plans for traffic? Because that's a bad, it's just, a, it's just a, a bad turn area. It's a bad everything on that corner. It is, uh, I remember as a child even that upholstery um, shop had been ran into a couple of times on that corner, on that turn. That's why it's built out the way it is. Is there any plans for uh, how you're going to deal with kind of the, the traffic, car traffic there? Because it's a, it's a kind of that corner is kind of, you know, um, dangerous. So uh, I mentioned, I think before you joined us, uh, parking and traffic management is uh, one of our uh, sweet spots in the context of how we do it in the Bay Area. Bay Area traffic is uh, a lot worse than what we know it to be in Sacramento. And of course, parking is even a, a bigger issue. We manage all of that uh, very nicely by uh, bringing security officers that are uh, very up to speed in the context of ensuring that traffic is managed properly and that it doesn't have any negative impact on the neighboring businesses. So we, we are quite seasoned in that regard and plan to bring that very same business model to that particular location. You know, uh, we, we, uh, the three of us, I don't know if you uh, heard our initial presentation, three of us grew up in that neighborhood, quite honestly, and we're very uh, up to speed in the context of uh, what goes on there and how we can responsibly manage it. Thank you for that. And, and I, I know Amelia has had her hand raised for a little while, so I want to make sure we get to Amelia uh, as well. Go for it. Thanks for that. Um, I am your neighboring business. I'm the abandoned building stands between us, but I'm your Stockton Boulevard neighbor um, across from Church's Chicken. And I get complaints. I've been open seven weeks. I'm sorry about my dog. I've been open about seven weeks and I get complaints about traffic and parking every single day. So um, I'm, I, I don't know if this is, my question is actually, can we just partner on this or um, do you have secret solutions that I could unlock with you or really like dig into that plan a little bit? Um, Cause I, th that does seem like it's the biggest hurdle that community is having other than any um, cannabis related thing. I will tell you, I signed my lease knowing that you would be on the block and with the intention of us being incredible neighbors. So I'm happy to meet you in person, even though it's not in person yet. And um, I have, I, our businesses have some parity and I'm really excited to see where that can go. And, um, and the neighborhood not getting lost in translation is really important to me, but I also come from the Bay Area and know your businesses and I know how impacted businesses can be um, in, in these kinds of moments of growth that can really actually just be gentrification. Um, and, and this feels like a workable plan so far. Thank you. And my last question, that really needs an answer is what is your relationship to Sacramento 
police going to be with regard to your security and how all of that is handled and with regard to the neighborhood and how they are already viewing police in many ways. Definitely. I, uh, I can start and, and Rob can finish the, the relationship with SAC PD. We have, uh, in the context of collaborating with you, uh, we are all for it. We'd love to get together and uh, discuss how we can properly collaborate in the context of traffic management, parking, the whole nine yards. Quite honestly, imagine if we put up a 7-Eleven in that corner. I think that would be uh, you know, 10 times worse in the context of the, the traffic impact and parking and any business that goes over there. I think what we don't want in that community is for that building to look as desperate as it is nowadays. We wanna, we wanna shape it up. We wanna bring uh, a better look to that particular corner, which is very popular and hopefully entice the neighboring businesses to upgrade their premises as well. So we are all about collaboration and you'll see that I personally will be going around meeting. I have done that already. I've gone and met with a number of neighbors in the area, in the residences at that. And, uh, and uh, I have assured each and every one of the business owners and, and, and neighbors that we are going to work with them to make sure that this becomes an amazingly positive mm -hmm. experience. Our track record, as Mariam explained, with five-star reviews across the board, many of them are neighboring businesses where we stand up our operations. And in that context, we have experience in being a good neighbor and we plan to bring that to Oak Park. Yeah. We, uh, we work with SAC we uh, constantly, in fact, uh, as a matter of, we were the first to implement that 24-7 uh, two-way security surveillance per SAC PD's recommendation. We were the first to go live with that and are essentially showcasing that by uh, working with, uh, I believe, uh, Lieutenant Young in SAC PD. Rob, do you want to add a little more to that? Yeah, I do. So first of all, thank you, Amelia. Uh, looking forward to, you know, hanging out. Um, and I, you know, it's, we, we have a very positive uh, sort of relationship with not only the police department, but with the, with the city in general. You know, um, cannabis is a highly, highly, highly regulated industry. And frankly, uh, when you have legal businesses moving into neighborhoods, a lot of the illicit trade starts to uh, move or starts to dry up a little bit. So I think it has that benefit. But I, I also wanted to address something. If you guys are looking at the comments, uh, the chat thread, my, uh, my old friend, Sue Hida, you know, actually makes a really good point about, you know, with Aggie Square coming online, there's gonna be even more traffic. And, and I think the answer isn't, so we shouldn't have any more businesses because there's too much traffic. I think that, you know, it, it's a chicken egg thing, right? You can have just blocks of blighted businesses that don't attract any traffic, or you can look at how is the neighborhood changing from a traffic pattern standpoint, given the development, and then start to talk to, you know, the people that are responsible at the city about, you know, kind of redoing streets, right, and, and making them better, because this is really an infrastructure issue. It's not a, should we have one more business on the corner issue, right? I mean, so, because the answer can't be, we shouldn't improve any more businesses if they're going to generate any traffic, because that can't be the answer, right? So I think that um, there's a lot for us to work on together. Um, we are, uh, always, always, always very good neighbors when we move into, uh, you know, a town or a neighborhood. Uh, to your point, Cassandra, we want to be very involved uh, in, in the things that everyone thinks positive, you know, for this part of town. And so anyway, just wanted to, to, to note that I think Sue has actually, if you look at the comments, it, that's, that's the actual, that's the actual solution to a lot of these things, right? It's like, you know, nobody's saying don't bring Aggie Square because it's going to bring traffic. Right. Well, thank you for, for the answers to those questions. And I, 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 I do have to cut off the Q&A currently, but if folks have additional questions, I've actually received some DMs with additional questions. We'll get those to the team, the Ohana Cannabis team and we'll report out. So yep. again, if there's still stuff you're curious about, um, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll get those questions to, to the team. Definitely, definitely. We, we actually believe in, uh, getting as many questions as possible because it only makes us stronger as a, as a neighborhood business. 
Thank you. Well, thank you for being here and rolling deep and bringing the, the whole team and letting us get to know them. Um, we really do appreciate that. We'll be in touch. So thank, thank you. you. Um, so now is, is uh, time for open announcements. Um, so anything you'd want to share, um, feel free to do so now. Uh, I'm going to take the point of privilege, though, and go first because um, I have uh, something I'm excited about, which is this is a, you know, the project that we talked about last month, but as many of you know, uh, my, my day job uh, at Valley Vision, we've deployed a network of air quality monitors. We've received actually $100,000 to do a participatory budgeting pilot in uh, Oak Park in North Sacramento, and we're seeking steering committee members to help us spend this money. So if you have ideas for how to spend 100,000 bucks that has an environmental justice air quality frame, um, we want you. Uh, and I will put the link in the chat, but here's just the, the flyer that we're using. And I'll be, I'll be flyering uh, this Saturday at the Spotlight on Stockton event that I hope to see some of you at. Um, but that's my pitch. I don't know if others have uh, announcements they'd like to share. I see Chris has raised his hand. Go for it, Chris. Thank you, Adrian. As a liaison for Rancho San Miguel Food for Less Stores, they just informed me that they will be ordering lots of turkeys and they're getting with their meat buyer and Broadway or Stockton partnership to figure out a location to give out those turkey dinners. It's going to be done ahead of time because the last time they did it at the grand opening, they were just shocked that they didn't have enough. People were coming back, so they want to do it again this year and make sure people have a Thanksgiving meal to eat due to everything that's going on. And I will be part of that um, to make sure it gets done correctly. Well, thank you, Chris, for that. Any, any other upcoming events, things that folks would like to promote? Cassandra. Uh, yes, hi, um, we're excited. I'm excited to announce that the Oak Park Speaker Series is back. Uh, and we will be kicking it off on Friday, I mean, Saturday, October 15th at 6 p.m. with Cynthia Marshall. Uh, she has just released a book called um, You've Been Chosen, Thriving Through It or something like that. But You've Been Chosen. And Cynthia Marshall uh, actually is from California, not necessarily Sacramento, but she has great ties. She's a retired at and exec, and she is currently the um, CEO of the Dallas Mavericks and the first African-American female CEO of an NBA franchise. So um, she's breaking, she's broken many glass ceilings, but her story, her book is about her bout with cancer and her faith that got her through it. So it's really a, a great read. And of course, she will bring all her perspective and that's at the Guild. So all are invited. You guys have been having some great events at the Guild. That is that is amazing. Kudos for, for securing her. <laughs> and they better not come here and beat the Kings, huh? <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> all right. Let's go to Katie Maple and Katie DeMaio. Hey everyone, we're doing a community barbecue at McClatchy Park this Saturday at 1 p.m. There's gonna be burgers, hot dogs, and vegan options. All are welcome. Thanks. Thank you. Let's go to Katie DeMaio and then Tamiko. Great. Um, I don't have a, a pure announcement yet, but I just want to let you all know. So I am part of the team that's bringing the Broadway Complete Streets plan coming um, into construction. So we are planning on having a public meeting. We are finalizing now. It's looking to be the week of November 14th. Again, this is for the Broadway Complete Streets plan. So I do understand that it's not all the way over to Oak Park, but there are some people that are definitely interested in, again, and we're also on the team for uh, Broadway Vision Zero, um, and we're hoping to be on the, the Oak Park plan too. And so again, I'm hoping that you're here a lot from me and my team here shortly. Our goal as a public engagement firm is to create spaces for you all to be able to come and talk to the city directly about what you need for your road improvements, um, whether that be bike lanes, better lights, better road improvements, better connections into the grid, 
whatever it might be. That is our goal is to kind of get some spaces available for you guys to come and have that direct link to the city. We're going to be updating the website that I just put in the link um, in the chat box there. Again, as you can see, we're finally moving out of the planning phases and into the construction phases. And so you'll start to see things that we'll start talking about construction. Um, the other quick thing I will say is that the Central City Mobility Plan, also known as the Downtown Mobility Plan, which is bringing about 30 more blocks of bike lanes, as well as turning Fifth Street back into two-way, is also going to be coming at the same time. And so you're going to see a lot of construction coming from the city, but our hopes is, is that you understand why it's coming um, and that it is hopefully at the end going to create a little bit more safer connections. Again, we're looking at the number one city for both bike and pedestrian accidents throughout the entire state. So that is our goal, is to increase some safety in some of these areas. Um, so if you have any questions about when these meetings are coming, how to best participate in them, or how we can best bring them to you if you cannot make it, I'm also going to put my email in the chat here. Um, and you'll be seeing me a lot. I'm hoping to be at each month of these meetings, kind of moving forward, just so you guys have an easy connection and an easy update if, uh, if you all need anything. No, we, we really appreciate that, Katie. And, you know, we we had a death um, of an unhoused uh, woman, you know, on on Broadway near 37th, um, six between six and eight weeks ago. Uh, and of course, uh, as Miss Jennings knows well, the the MLK uh, Broadway intersection is has has uh, some issues. Um, and in fact, they're doing some construction. Do you know what's going on with the facade there, Cassandra? It looks like there's some work happening or. Are they fixing it? <laughs> I, I think they finally are. And you know, there was a lot of exterior or uh, foundational, I should say, um, damage done in that last um, accident. So it looks like they're finally fixing the exterior and we could only hope that they will then fix the interior so we can move back in. Great. <laughs> Yeah, so all that is to say, thanks for joining these meetings because we talk a lot about our various corridors. We have a lot of corridors in and around us <laughs> as a neighborhood, so. Um, well, and I know that there's a lot of work, um, again, being done to try and connect Broadway and again, just make it safer overall. Safety is the main thing that we're hearing and that's kind of really our goal is just to make it safe for all modes of travel, not just one. Yep, I hear you. All right, Tamiko, then Michael. Hi, I just want to back up what she just said. Yes, active transportation is always looking at all those things that you guys are talking about, especially with the corridors. Our commission meets every third Thursday, so make sure that you guys check that out and bring your um, stuff to those commission meetings if ever possible. And then also I'd like to shout out the Oak Park Peace Walk. It's a good way to meet your neighbors it's every Thursday at 6 p.m. It is currently at Pastor Jones's church, which is New St. Bethel off of 8th Avenue. So um, Peace Walk, the Oak Park Peace Walk is every Thursday at 6 p.m. And the Active Transportation Commission, which deals with some of your crossings and your um, those corridors that you guys are talking about, that commission meets every third Thursday. All right, thank you. Thank you, Michael. All right, I'm going to share my screen real quick just to show a open house that's happening, and this is on the 14th. Uh, many don't know, but Highlands Charter has moved into uh, Immaculate Conception. The, the church is still there, but then the rest of the campus is now uh, part of Highlands Charter, and they have really good programs. As a matter of fact, when Food Bank, uh, as they exit Oak Park, part of their uh one of the programs they had was uh, more of the adult education piece and they actually admitted they said hey highlands charter has been doing this they're growing they're all around town they're actually doing a better job than we are so they felt good about being able to you know uh, hand this off to uh folks like highlands charter so if anybody wants to see their campus free food music and uh, i think it'd be good just to be able to connect in with them uh they also are, you know, very open to allowing folks to utilize their facility for different things. So they really want to become part of the community. So I think uh, it's a good opportunity to be able to give them a chance and uh, step up and get to know them quick. 
and this is posted on the Facebook page as well. And you said they're in Immaculate Conception? Yeah. Yeah. The so how does that, school. like where in Immaculate Conception? Like uh, They took over all the buildings. Uh, they left the oh. church to be a church and then the rest of the buildings are theirs. Okay, cool. Yeah. Very central. <laughs> yeah, and it's beautiful. I got a tour the other day um, earlier this week and um, they've done a great job in, yeah. in uh, rehabbing the space. They did. Cool. cool. Um, any other, anything else folks want to promote or share? I have one thing then. Um, and this is just making sure that folks, and Hugo, I see you. I'll go to you next. Um, so OPNA does this awesome email newsletter that hopefully you all get. If you don't get it, leave your email in the chat and we will get you on our list. But basically we promote our meetings like this meeting. We promote uh, this, well, we did this last night, this candidate debate. We promote our, we share recordings of our previous meetings. We of course share big news like the Oak Park Farmers Market being canceled for the season. Um, set, bummer, but it, it's it's what happens. <laughs> and you know, if cur folks are curious about, you know, kind of some background there, we're happy to chat uh, offline about that. Um, we share Aggie Square Construction updates. Um, that are sent to us by UC Davis. Um, of course, we have a partnership with SMUD we're proud of and share some, some fun stuff there, uh, as well as uh, you know, local news about crimes, upcoming events, and more. So I uh, hope to see some of you on Saturday at Spotlight on Stockton. It's at Donner um, Field, um, right next to William Lee uh, from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. I'll be there. I'm sure others will um, tabling for OPNA. Um, that should be a fun event. Um, and then, of course, tomorrow night, we have Oak Park First Fridays. Um, basically, uh, the, the commercial corridor in Oak Park is going to be completely lit up, going to be tons of people doing stuff. Businesses will be open late. Um, and one thing to, to highlight is the Hacker Lab, the, the nonprofit, um, formerly located in Midtown and Downtown, and, uh, but initially started actually over in Curtis Park, is moved to Oak Park. Um, and they have a really wonderful entrepreneurial space. Um, along Broadway there. Um, you can still get another day of free, free SAC RT. Um, so take advantage of that. Um, and then just some other stuff. Uh, Alhambra Preschool is enrolling. Uh, they're waiving all fees until June 30th. So that is a no cost preschool opportunity for you. So take note of that. Um, I don't know if they're full, um, but you should check it out just in case. Um, and of course, uh, Hacker Lab will be having um, the, the Sisters Inspiring Sisters um, event. I think they'll have some free mimosas and stuff at Hacker Lab tomorrow night. It's also this event, free, bar free haircuts and food and stuff. Um, there's a fun, I'm going to this too, this beer event uh, at Oak Park Brewing on Saturday, um, supporting uh, beer basically equity in beer, um, black brewers, uh, women owned uh, breweries. Um, and it's a, just gonna be a fun event if you like beer. Of course, promoting Cassandra's event, um, the Oak Park Speaker Series, a uh, good candidate forum with some of our, our local candidates on transportation issues, like we talked about. Um, and of course, uh, our friends at City Church have their upcoming Harvest and Health Festival, which is great. And then more fun stuff at the guilds. Um, they have a great comedy show series that is really outstanding uh, that I highly recommend um, if you have a sense of humor. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Michael, did you have anything else? No, sorry, I forgot to lower my hand, but no, okay, that's so it. Let's do, let's do Hugo briefly and then Chris. And just just know we, we don't have time to open up another can of worms, but but I just have a quick question, actually, um, in regards to Macro Conception, I actually live across the street. And um, does anyone know when they're going to take down the boarded up entrance and fix it? I spoke to Gerald Pauly um, a month or so back, and he said they had a permit to put the fence. But I believe that's the fence that they put up in the back last week. Um, but I'm curious as to when the um, boarded up entry is going to come down. Uh, it's looking pretty bad. Does anybody have any clues on that? I don't. Probably a great question to ask if you're able to make it on the 14th, but I don't know. 
Yep, better come to the event on the 14th. You can. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> All right, thank you. Thanks. And Chris. Yes, sir, I f forgot to mention that uh, we have the new Sheriff's Oversight Commission, which is done every third or fourth Tuesday. I believe it's the third Tuesday, but you check the website at 6 p.m. in the Board of Supervisors Chambers. And I am one of the commissioners for South Sacramento, and we need more public input on the questions that was asked by the public when this commission was being formed. So every third or fourth Tuesday at 6 p.m., look on the website and it'll give you the agenda and the exact date and time. Thanks for that plug, that's important. All right, everybody. Well, thanks so much for joining us um, for our, our OPNA meeting. They usually don't last this long, but we had some really in-depth discussions, particularly on cannabis. Um, uh, so, so very interesting and, and really uh, appreciate all of you making the time and staying to the end and for our announcements. So again, hope to see you first Thursday next month. And then maybe at some of these upcoming events tomorrow night and Saturday and, and at the Guild on the 15th. <laughs> All right. All right. Thank you. Good night. Bye, everybody. Thank you, everyone. All right.